Randy the Natural Couture. I'm Stefan Bonner. This is Kendall the Spider Grove. I'm Carl Prezen. This is Brandon Truth Vera. Hey, I'm Ariane Celeste. Yeah, I'm Chuck Dunn. I'm Forrest Griffin. I am Fyodor. You are watching MMA Fix. For RawVegas.tv and the MMA Fix, I'm Dave Fair at the Orleans in Las Vegas. And tonight, we're at Tough Enough, which is a show all about the amateurs, the big rising stars of mixed martial arts. Tonight, we'll talk to some of the more recognizable faces from the MMA community. You're here tonight at Tough Enough at the Orleans Arena. Tell us why. I'm here, Corner. Well, a couple guys from my gym, Striking Unlimited, are, are here fighting tonight. So, Corner and them are helping them out. You uh, must be getting tired of coaching people because you've been doing that seemingly for the last what, nine months continuously, right? I like all aspects of martial arts. I've loved it my whole life. So whether, you know, eventually this is going to be what I'm going to have to do in the future, you know, can't fight forever. Let's talk about this season of The Ultimate Fighter where you were the coach. It seems like these last or first six, seven episodes, even eight episodes have been very much about Junie and how crazy and out of hand he gets. And then in the last episode that we saw on Spike TV, there was um, some semen on some sushi or something. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of crazy antics and people, uh, maybe the, the production company is focusing on that side of it a little bit more. Do you like that or not? Not particularly. I mean, obviously, I'm you know a pure martial artist. I like to watch the training. I wish they would show more of what Nogueira and I were doing in our different you know in contrasts of training and similarities. You know, in the technical aspect of the game. But also, I understand for me to make a living at what I do, people have to tune into it. You know. Well, that, that's becoming a bigger part of the MMA community and just how you know how they're bringing in new fans is showmanship and hype. And one person that of course leaps to mind is Brock Lesnar. A lot of the people say, okay, he's not the number one contender. Why is he getting a shot? at Randy Couture and at the UFC heavyweight belt. What's your take on that? This is an entertainment sport. People buy tickets. You have the most deadly guy in the world. If no one wants to see him fight, no one knows his name, you're not gonna pay him any money because you pay him upon how much money you can make off of him. So it's partial fighting because obviously you have to win, but it's also part market, uh, marketability. Here you have Brock Lesnar. He's only two and two. He's getting to fight for the title, but guess what? Because his name's on there, he's in a fight. More people will tune in to watch him fight than they're gonna tune in to watch Randy. That's just the fact of the matter. You know what I mean? He's the most popular guy we have in our sport right now. If I were gonna give you a thousand dollars and say, bet this money and try to make me some on that fight, who would you bet on? I'd just give you your money back. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us who brings you here tonight. Three of our top amateur fighters that have fought in uh, Tough Enough before. Um, we've got Weston Dushin, we've got uh, Chance Torres, who's uh, a, you know a big name, and Mark Pham, you know, three of our up-and-comers, and they're big names in the Tough Enough show. This man loves being in the corner. As a matter of fact, instructing people is what you spend all day, every day doing. You must absolutely love it. I love it. I live for it. You know, the, the travel schedule is pretty hectic for me, but the guys I get to work with are great. You know? Randy Couture is another uh, very close friend of yours. You work over at his gym, Extreme Couture. How are you preparing his striking side of his game for his big upcoming fight with Brock? It's no uh, question in anybody's mind that he has to strike. You know, um, he doesn't want to just go out there and work muscle for muscle with a guy that big. So uh, we've been working a lot of angles and uh, using, uh, using the cage to our advantage. And uh, like I tell everybody, don't ever bet against Randy Couture. Let's talk about your fight game though because there's been uh, some rumors recently that you're going to return possibly to stand-up fighting maybe get back into doing MMA and focus all of your attention on that take a little bit of time away from training is that true yeah absolutely I mean I'm, I'm interested and I'm, I'm waiting for a promoter to step up and uh, open the door for me but uh, I've been training been getting ready again my schedule is hectic and crazy so it'll, it'll all depend on that first and foremost I'm a trainer you know my fighters depend on me so I, I got to look at that but uh, if somebody wants to put together a stand-up fight for me I'm ready to rock is it odd that you're uh, all of a sudden one of the uh, the more recognizable faces at events like this? I wish I was recognized for my fighting ability a little more, but instead of my drunken antics. But either way, people know who I am, so pretty happy with that. Do you like to come out here and, and be on the other side of things, supporting people, helping other ones out? Uh, I like to come out to all these uh, amateur fights and stuff. It reminds me when I first started and stuff. You had a lot of problems with a lot of different people in the house throughout the show, but uh, one person in particular, Dave Kaplan, comes to mind. And uh, we don't know what happens on the show yet because it hasn't aired, but is that somebody that you would want to fight? Yeah, but not necessarily. I mean, uh, a lot of the stuff uh, you know that happens on the show and stuff, they don't, uh, they don't really show everything that happened, but uh, he's actually a pretty cool guy, and uh, I don't really have nothing against him. You know, I just have a little bit of an anger problem, obviously. I say Donovan Craig, and everyone goes, man, that name sounds familiar. Why is that? And you realize that the man is representing his brand right across his shirt here with Fight Magazine. As a man who's been so involved in the fight game for so long, uh, does it add more pressure, uh, maybe an expectancy, to how you're actually going to perform when you step into the ring tonight? The pressure was in the training. I mean, the, the, these guys train so hard and put their bodies through such, you know, torture to get ready for these fights, and that's what I did, and that was really the... Um, that was really the challenge. I think uh, 
now that I've gotten through that, I think, uh, you know, that the, the fighting will be, you know, will take care of itself. Who has been most instrumental in getting you ready for this fight, though? The guys at uh, Extreme Couture, where I was taking the pro class there, they were very good. And um, in Victorville, there's uh, Joe Stevenson and a guy named uh, Irvin Bounds, a very talented uh, young trainer out there uh, that uh, got me really in good shape uh, with my conditioning. And is this a long-term thing? I mean, do you think that you're going to go in there tonight, clean up, and go, you know, I want to dedicate all of my time to fighting, or is this always going to be a side project for you? The reason that I did this was that I wanted to understand, uh, you know, really from the inside what these guys go through, the sacrifices they make. Uh, and it has it's so uh, increased my understanding of the sport um, that it's, it's just been amazing. Are you going to write a scathing article about yourself if you lose? Well, I don't know. It's going to be a three-piece article, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Fighting tonight at Tough Enough. You can check him out in Fight Magazine. Donovan Craig, thanks for talking to us. Hey, thank you very much.